filling in Venn diagrams, probabilities, again, logical puzzles, interpreting information and recognizing assumptions. OK, I'm not going to go into all of this, but at least if you can start to understand, you know, these are the six types of questions that you will get in decision making. So now you can start um, really focusing your revision around these six topics. So syllogisms, again, all this, all, all the content that, uh, that I've kind of talked about in these um, six points are all covered in our um, YouTube channel as well. So if you go onto our YouTube channel, you'll be able to find out a bit more about syllogisms, where you're given basically two or more statements and you have to use logical reasoning. Again, have a look at the videos, start to understand and, and just kind of um, appreciate the types of questions that can come up. Again, Venn diagrams, exactly the same thing. It's quite self-explanatory there. You, you have to fill in a Venn diagram. Um, the next bit, uh, probabilistic reasoning. So again, this is all about probability. So if you struggle with probability, I'd really highly recommend um, understanding what fractions are and really recapping ratios. So ratios and fractions are very, very important. Um, one thing I'd really high, highly recommend doing is learning um, what one over six is as a decimal place, one over seven as a decimal place, one over eight as a decimal place. Again, these are really, really big points um, in terms of um, being able to answer these questions without using the calculator. You don't want to use the calculator um, because it is very, very time uh, wasteful. So you, you do want to use logical uh, mental maths as much as possible. And again, this moves us on to kind of logical puzzles. Again, all this stuff is on our YouTube channel to really appreciate and grasp these topics. And again, interpreting information, it's about involving kind of which conclusion best follows an argument. So you get given an argument, which conclusion follows it. Again, let's now talk a bit more about decision making. So there's loads of different types of questions, but I've just very, very briefly talked about those six key points. Um, people really struggle with the Venn diagram aspect of, of decision making. Um, the problems do take a long period of time. So that's why today I'm going to be talking about guesstimating, a really, really useful way of answering questions in very, very little time. So I think let's crack on with it. The aim of today is to really go through these two points at the beginning. So the golden clue and the follow through method. Um, and these are two steps, one and two. So two steps and you'll be able to get to the answer as quickly as possible. So what on earth is this golden clue that I keep on talking about, the golden clue method? What on earth does it mean? Well, the golden clue is basically spotting words that really end with EST. That's how I remember it. It's the golden clue is thinking about words like the highest, the biggest, the most, the least, the fastest, the slowest. So any any word that is really exaggerating or, or, or is, is, is on one end of the spectrum. So it might be the, the largest building in the world. It might be the smallest country in the world. This is where you have to pay as much attention to in the question. So think about this golden clue. Golden clue. I'm going to reemphasize it one more time. It's usually words that end with EST or ST. And it's and it's the words that are really emphasizing that the greatest, the most or the least. Um, or the slowest and things like that. And again, we'll go through this next question together. So let's do an example. Um, Moho, if you can just get the poll up and running, should be should be up now, I think. People's screen. Perfect, so have a go at this question. So Shivan, for these questions, yeah, how long do people normally get to answer them? Uh, roughly about a minute. So a minute is, is, is you know, it's not a lot of time. But um, one of the things that I really emphasise at the beginning in terms of starting decision making is actually giving yourself two minutes. Give yourself an opportunity to answer the question. Don't worry about the time. Even if you spend six minutes, that's fine. 
but just appreciating the question, appreciating what what are the questions like, that will really, really be helpful. So again, so far, how, how long have we had, Moho? It's around... Yeah, um, so we've had a minute 10, only 37 participants have voted. So yeah, not that many out. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, guys, is just leave it for another minute, minute and a half, just to appreciate this type of question. Remember what I said, the golden clue is look at that sentence that has the, that kind of ending with EST. So is it the largest? Is it the most expensive, the cheapest? That's one of the things that I talk about here. Um, Mohill, in terms of timing here, yeah. um, I'm gonna really, really emphasize this. Anyone starting decision-making, do not spend one minute on the question, okay? Don't rush into anything, just appreciate the time um, and give, you, give yourself enough time. Give yourself two, three minutes, be, be easy on yourself. So most people have voted now, about 60%. Um, so yeah, we'll just wait for a few more and then we'll share the results. Should we wait till, yeah, we'll wait till 70% have voted. Uh, and yeah, okay, perfect. I'll end it there. Perfect. So let's go through this now. I, again, the answer there was Cassandra, but I'm going to go through it very, very simply and slowly. Again, two, two steps. Remember, everything really happens generally in two steps. So... The first thing I'm going to do is, first of all, read the question to you just so everyone can really understand it. So Andrew, Bridget, Cassandra and Danielle went abroad. Each went on an excursion, snorkeling, salsa, lessons, cooking and a city walking tour in no particular order. The prices were 28, 38, 45 and 55 euro euros. Andrew did not spend the most on his activity, but spent 10 euros more than Cassandra. Bridget's excursion snorkeling was cheaper than Danielle's. Andrew did not go on the city walk and neither did Cassandra. The cheapest activity was the cooking. So we kind of have four sentences of information, which to me is too much. There's too much going on. It's very complicated. It seems like quite a difficult question to start off with, but I'm going to use the golden clue. And the golden clue here, again, I can see it there, black and white. The cheapest activity was cooking. So here it is. The cheapest activity was cooking. So I know the cheapest activity was 28 euros, wasn't it? So 28 euros, 100% I know is cooking. So that's the first step that I've done. I've used the golden clue and that's my first step. I know that the cheapest activity was cooking. So therefore the cheapest activity was 28 euros. Now, I'm now going to read. So I've, I've identified my golden clue. Now I'm going to get, just, just read from, from the start now. So. Andrew did not spend the most on his activity, but spent 10 euros more than Cassandra. So I'm just going to highlight it here for you guys. Andrew did not spend the most on his activity, but spent 10 euros more than Cassandra. So Andrew could have spent 55 euros and um, Cassandra could have spent 45 euros, but it says here that he didn't spend the most. So he couldn't have spent 40, he couldn't have spent 55. Um, Andrew must have spent 38 euros why is that well why why can't he spend 45 euros well that's because there's no answer here for 35 euros so andrew didn't spend um 45 euros he must have spent 38 euros because he spent 10 euros more than cassandra very very simple i've done that's my second step so i know that andrew spent 38 euros i don't know what he did but i knew he spent 38 euros I now know that Cassandra spent 28 euros. Well, we've got our answer now, haven't we? So who went cooking? Well, we know that cooking was the cheapest activity and we know that Cassandra um, spent 28 euros. So that's why the answer is Cassandra. Very, very simple. I, 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 I simplified everything there. I just used two steps and I used the golden clue method. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this one more time. If anyone found this a bit challenging, I'm going to go for it one more time to really appreciate this. So the first thing I did is I is I applied the golden clue method. So I scanned the text very, very quickly. Now I then identified this sentence right at the end, which says the cheapest activity was the cooking. That was my golden clue. So that was what I highlighted. I know that the person who spent 28 euros must have done cooking. Step number one. So again, we've got step number one. Step number two, we're just going to read through it now. And this first sentence here says that Andrew did not spend the most on his activity, but spent 10 euros more than Cassandra. 
So that means we know for 100% that Andrew spent 38 euros. This sentence has given it to us. He spent 38 euros and therefore Cassandra must have spent 10 euros. So Andrew, so we know that cooking was 28 euros and Andrew spent 38 euros. Therefore, we, um, remember at that stage, we can get rid of Andrew. At, we could have got rid of Andrew very, very early on um, because we know that Andrew spent 38 euros. So you can cancel Andrew, you can get rid of it. If you wanted to guess at this stage, you can, but I wouldn't because you can get to the answer straight away here. We know that Andrew spent 38 euros, so therefore Cassandra spent 28 euros. So I'm just going to go to the next slide. It's going to let me. Um, there we go. So Cassandra spent um, 28 euros and did cooking. So the golden clue, it sounds so easy and so simple because it is. Um, and you will start to appreciate this golden clue when you start doing the UCAT question. So every time you face a decision making question, just just tell yourself, I'm going to use the golden clue. I'm going to identify a sentence which, which has the largest, the cheapest, the fastest, the slowest. And I'm going to read that first. So a big timing tip here is always look at the answer options and question as you may end up trying to match every item up when you only need to know one or two. So. Why is this really, really important? Because here, guys, from Bridget all the way on to this bit about Cassandra was actually a complete waste. We didn't even need to read it at all. And I, I didn't actually read it in the end. Um, I didn't even read that sentence because it was completely irrelevant to me. The first thing I did is I identified the golden clue, which was down here. And then I read the first sentence of this paragraph. I didn't even read the rest of it because I had got to the answer. So this is what I'm saying. You don't need to match everything up. A lot of you were trying to do this question, probably try to figure out, OK, who spent 45, who spent 55 uh, euros. Um, again, that's that's a lot of time wasting. It's very easy. Two steps. So next question, Mohu, if you if you mind just getting the poll set up. There we go. Perfect. So again, take your time with this. My biggest clue for this question is look at this um, currency that is used here. I just look at the currencies used. So fastest response so far at 40 seconds was one person. Uh, so far, we've only got one or 2% that have voted. Um, so let's see how many make it by the one minute mark. Oh, that's perfect. To be honest, Moho, that's exactly what I want. I want no one really answering before a minute because that mm. means they've probably done it a bit too quickly. Um, so just take your time, take your time with this question. Shim, we've got one question. If you have more than one word ending in est, how do you know which one to choose as a golden word? Really fantastic question. Um, what I would do is if, if there are two words that kind of end in st, um, what I would probably try and do is actually identify the first one that you read. So kind of systematically. So the one that kind of arrived there at, in chronological order. So the, the first word that you saw that was est or that kind of largest or smallest, that's the one that I would read first. So only half have voted at this point and we're about two and a half minutes in. 
perfect. Um, what we'll do then, Moho, is there a way to actually not get the answer up straight away? Is there a way to kind of delay the answer? Yeah, yeah. So if you if you carry on, it will just show the most popular answer. I won't show okay, the correct brilliant. answer necessarily. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to do that. So I don't want to give it away straight away. Um, so really, we've got a, we've got a big split between all of them. So there's no kind of consistent winner there. Um, let's go through this very, very slowly. And again, Mohil, if you've got any questions, if you want to just go through this with me as well, um, I can break break it down and just ask any questions that you have and I can go for it. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do, Mohil, um, is I am going to look at the answers here. And that was the tip that I gave everyone, is look at the answers very, very quickly. And I can see here that we have two currencies. We have Zloty and we have Danish Krone. Moga, why is that so important? Um, well, because well, we know which ones to focus on, because looking at the text, we can see there's pounds, euros, etc. But the fact that there's only Krone and uh, Zloty mentioned is that we can pick out those two currencies in the text. Perfect. So that's that's what I want to focus on. So I want to focus on Zloty and Danish Krone. That's the one that I want to focus on here. Now, the uh, again, we the answers are there now, but it's, it's fine. We'll go for it slowly. It's just got the, the most the most common answer. So, yeah. OK, perfect. Oh, yeah. Amazing. So let's go through this. So we've we've we know that it's going to be between um, Zloty and Danish Krone. Is that correct, Mohil? Yeah. OK, so what is the golden clue here in this paragraph? Can you identify it for me? Um, so we can see that the, well, we're looking at the product sold in Zloty had the lowest numerical price. Um, so the lowest numerical price has to be 57. Exactly. That's our golden clue. That's our first step that we've identified. The product sold in Zloty had the lowest numerical value. So that means that Zloty had to be 57. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, Absolutely. because that's the lowest currency we have. Exactly. So what you can do straight away immediately we've only read one sentence in mohill we can immediately get rid of c why can we immediately get rid of c because um 57 zloty will be the currency we can't have one item being 57 of a different currency and a second item being of zloty because the item that has zloty will be 57 so for example if it's room d Room D will be 57 Zloty. It won't be 57 pounds. And then room A being, you know, 75 uh, Zloty. So, yeah. Perfect. So, Moha, I'm really emphasizing this point here because if you had 15 seconds on this question, all you had to do was read the golden clue here. The product sold in Zloty had the lowest numerical price. And immediately I can get rid of C. So I've just got rid of C straight away. OK, I've got rid of it. Um, it's it's. Um, completely removed from my from my brain and I'm, I'm now choosing between a b and d so if i've only got 15 seconds moha what i've done there is i've eliminated one and i've given myself an opportunity to now guesstimate and and now think yeah. about you know just just guessing from the remaining three so this is this is in very very time restrictive um questions but again it's it's better than it's better than nothing isn't it it's at least i'm giving myself a better opportunity so We've identified that golden clue. Now, what do you think is the is is an important part here, Moho, to go through next? What, what where should where should we go? What, what should what do you think we should read? So we're again we're focusing on the Zloty and Chrome, but we're also focusing on room D and room A. So what I'd look for is any sentence that mentions in particular anything about room A and D. Perfect. So what I'm actually going to do here, um, Mohu, is I, I really wanted to focus on Zloty and Danish Krone, didn't I? I emphasized at the, yeah. that at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really emphasize this second sentence here, which says the currency is not Zloty for B and D and the currency for C is euros or pounds. Let's break that down. So Zloty, but, so the currency is not Zloty for B and D. So that means Zloty must be between what? A and what? C. From A and C. Exactly. So it's between A and C. But we're told that C is in euros or pounds. So what have we learned from this sentence here, Mohil? That the currency um, of A has to be uh, Zloty because uh, we know for C it can't be euros or pounds. Perfect. Absolutely. So we know 100% from this sentence here that um, Zloty 
can't be B, it can't be room D, and it can't be room C because room C is in euros or pounds. So we know 100% that Zloty is used for A. Now, if anyone read this, this sentence first, so um, this bit here, the second sentence, they know that Zloty is going to be room A. So actually, they, they're giving themselves a 50-50 chance that time mm. if they read that second sentence. So they would decide between A and C. But because I used the golden clue, I eliminated C straight away, didn't I, Mohill? I yeah. eliminated it immediately. And I know for a fact that the answer must therefore be A, 100%. Yeah. Fantastic. How many steps did I use there, Mohill? About two steps, pretty much. Two steps. I've done it again. Two steps. I've broken this down into two steps. And that is really, really important. This is the kind of key point of today, really breaking it down into two steps. So I'm just going to try and go into the next slide. But everything is running a bit slow today. Um, but we'll try our best. Let's see. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to break this down really, really slowly again. So the first thing I did is I quickly had a quick glance at the answers here, and I noticed that they only had Zloty and Danish Kron um, as the currencies there for room A. Okay, So that means that immediately in my head, when I read the question, I'm going to focus on Zloty and Danish Kron. I don't really care about the others, the euros and the pounds. I'm, I'm, I really want to focus on Zloty and uh, the Danish Kron. So I use the golden clue method right at the beginning. I identified there that um, the product sold in Zloty had the lowest numerical price. Okay, so the lowest numerical price. So because of that, I read, I used the golden clue and the golden clue gave me an opportunity to remove C straight away. So the golden clue, what the golden clue has done, to, done here in this question is it's given me an opportunity to now guesstimate the answer. So now, instead of a one out of four chance, I'm now giving myself a one out of three chance just by using the golden clue. OK, so again, if you've got 10 seconds on a question like this, use the golden clue and you're going to increase your, your chance of getting the correct answer. Now, if you had the four minute, again, we finished the golden clue. We're now going to focus on Zloty and Danish Kron. And that's what I did here. We, we looked at the second sentence, which said the currency is not Zloty, the B and D. So that means it must be between A and C. But then we find out here that the currency for C is euros or pounds. So therefore, Zloty must be A. And we know that we eliminated C right at the beginning using the golden um, clue rule. So therefore, the answer there is, is A. So again, golden clue, products sold in Zloty have the lowest numerical value. Again, I'm, I'm really, really just going to keep on emphasizing the golden clue today. So it really sticks in everyone's mind. The golden clue is those words ending with EST or ST. It's the biggest, the smallest. Moho, did you have any questions about that at all? Um, yeah, so I'm just looking at the um, questions that people had. So I think... Uh, essentially the main thing as I said was people wondering how do we choose the golden clue but just to emphasize with the golden clue if you're unsure just look at what the question's asking we can tell from the question that we have to focus on uh, Zloty, Crone and perhaps from A or D so when you quickly scan the text just look for any golden clue that mentions Zloty or Crone um, and that's what Shivam did he found that the product sold in Zloty was the lowest numerical price and he started with that um, so just have that at the back of your mind there may be a few items which are highest lowest um, so I'd say that's probably the most important thing um, so yeah I think that was one question another question someone had was does the golden clue method only work for logical puzzles so I'd say it's, it's something that we use specifically for logical puzzles um, it can be applied for other sections of the UCAP but this is from our research we found to be one of the more effective methods that's not to say Shimon will every question in decision making have a golden clue exactly so this is a big point here so um, you know yeah. every logical puzzle won't have a golden clue there available to you so just bear that in mind if you don't see a golden clue you know don't be like oh no i'm i'm not going to get this question right or it's going to give me a uh, less of an opportunity there are other clues available so moha one of the big clues here in this question was actually the, that, that tip that i gave right at the beginning and that was just have a quick glance of the answers and the answers here had zloty and danish crone so in my mind, I'm thinking when I read the question, I'm going to focus on Zloty and Danish Krone more than I am for euros and, and, and pounds. OK, so actually. 
Bohill, even if we didn't have a golden clue here in, in, in our question, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all because initially we've used another clue, haven't we? It's a, it's a quick yeah. spot check clue um, at looking at the answers. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Fantastic. So the next one that we're going to go through very, very quickly is the follow through method. So that is um, that when you cut logical puzzles, they, they, they tend to talk about something more often than something else. So what do I mean by that? Well, if, if the question was asking you about animals um, and they mentioned cat five times and they only mentioned dog or cow or pig two times or one time, that means that actually in our brain, we need to start thinking a bit more about um, that, 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 uh, that piece that was mentioned a bit more often. So the cat that was mentioned five times. Exactly the same on that previous question, sort kind of the same. We know here that we've we we know that kind of our follow through method is we're going to be following through with Zlotty and Danish Crone. That is going to be our main focus. That that is what we are um, in our mind just going to really focus on most. So let's have a go at this question again. Think about what pieces of information are coming up more than others. So Moho, if you just start the poll for me. Um, and again, really, really yeah. look at this section here. Think about which trains are being talked about more than others. So Moha, what's making me really happy with this question is that a lot of people have identified a really big aspect of the UCAT here, and, and mm -hmm. that is um, the follow through method. So what, 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 what do we mean by this? Well, we can see here that Milton Keynes and Wolverhampton, for some reason, keep on popping up constantly, don't they? Um, yeah. We can see it here. So Wolverhampton, Milton Keynes, Wolverhampton, Milton Keynes, Wolverhampton, Milton Keynes. On each bullet point, Wolverhampton and Milton Keynes are talked about, aren't they? So actually, say, Mohill, I had five seconds or 10 seconds on this question. What, what tip would you give people? What, what, what would you do in a situation like this and use a bit of guesstimating here? So I'd say because Wolverhampton and Milton Keynes are mentioned so much, I'd focus on those two, either one of them, and just, you know, see where they're going, maybe see what, try and gather all the information I can about the Wolverhampton train, because that that might be the right answer, because it's mentioned so much. Yeah, perfect. So that that is, you know, if you've only got 10, 15 seconds, you can see that Wolverhampton and Milton Keynes have been coming up and cropping up constantly. If I had five seconds on, on this question, Mohu, and it was the last question in my decision-making part, and I, and I quickly read through and I noticed Wolverhampton, Milton Keynes, Wolverhampton, Milton Keynes. Do you know what I would do, Mohill? I would just choose the answer between B and C because it mm. just mentions Milton Keynes and Wolverhampton. Again, mm. this is really, really quick guesstimating what I'm doing. It's quite, it's, it's, it's on the borderline of silly, isn't it? It's on the borderline of maybe just completely randomly guessing. 
but I just mentioned Memo, who I only, only have five seconds or 10 yeah. seconds on this question. So I'm going to be really, really, really quick. Okay. Um, let's go through this. So one of the things that I've noticed is I think that we should try and work out what time um, the train leaves for Milton Keynes and Wolverhampton. That would be really, really sensible because that keeps on coming up constantly. So actually we can do that in this first um, bullet point, which is fantastic. So tell me, Mohill, how can we work out what time the Birmingham, the Wolverhampton and Milton Keynes train leave just by reading that first sentence there? Well, we know that the Birmingham train is after Wolverhampton and we know that the uh, uh, Birmingham train is before. So what we can do is we can basically draw out a timeline of where each of the uh, trains are coming. And because we know there's a 45 minute gap between them, we can look at the times and look for 45 minute gaps. So for example, I see a 45 minute gap between 10.30 and 11.15 yep. um, and uh, between 11.15 and 12. So we know that those three have to occupy those three slots essentially. Perfect. So why why did you eliminate 11.30? Why didn't you use 11.30 there at all? Because again, there's no, if I add 45 minutes to 11.30, I get 12.15. There's no train leaving at 12.15. If I take away 45 minutes from 11.30, I get 10.45. There's no train leaving at 10.45. So basically what we've done there is we've, we've realised that we can eliminate something straight away. So we can eliminate 11.30 because it doesn't fit into our three time exactly. schedules there. Okay. So we know that the Birmingham train leaves 45 minutes after the Wolverhampton train. So the Wolverhampton train has left and now the Birmingham train is leaving after the Wolverhampton train. Okay. So that means that actually it's, and, and remember the Birmingham train is 45 minutes before the Milton Keynes train. So what we what we can basically find out from there, Mohill, is that the Birmingham train seems to be smack bang on between, in the middle, in the yeah. middle between the Wolverhampton and the Milton Keynes train. Exactly. So what, what, what can we, what can we basically, confirm from this so what 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 leaves at 10 what leaves at 11 15 then therefore 11 15 will be at birmingham yeah uh, and then after that train uh, so then wolverhampton will be 10 30 and Perfect. then milton Keynes at uh, um 12 exactly so we 100 percent know that 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 is correct so moho we've only found out one piece of information one piece of information there what can we do in terms of guesstimating and and looking at the answers here well you know if we just look at option b we can see that the milton Keynes train does leave from 12 now the only option is do we want to com definitely confirm that it also leaves from platform two so it really just depends on how much time you have doesn't it Shivan? because with the uk it's so time pressured that the fact that you know half of it being true you might just you know kind of again the important thing about guesstimating and thinking B might be the answer. Um, so you, if you have another 10 seconds, you might just want to confirm that Milton Keynes does leave from platform two, but we wouldn't spend too long confirming that, would we? Oh, and actually, Moho, one of the things that I was looking for there was um, to actually eliminate one of our answers. We could have eliminated, therefore, C straight away because yeah. we know that actually Birmingham leaves at 11.15, not the Wolverhampton. Not Wolverhampton so again, yeah. now we're thinking... Let's say we didn't have 10 seconds, Mohil. We had 30 seconds or 40 seconds mm. of time here. If we had 30 or 40 seconds of time, that would give us enough time to read this first sentence, wouldn't it? And work out yeah. that the um, Birmingham train leaves at 11.15, the Milton Keynes train leaves at 12, and the Wolverhampton train leaves at 10.30. Okay. Just from that, we can eliminate C, and we're giving ourselves a better opportunity to maybe guesstimate the answer here. Okay. Is that sensible? Yeah. Perfect. So then we'll, what we're going to do, Mohu, and I've just noticed this actually, is there's a golden clue here, isn't there? Where's our golden clue? So we know that the Wolverhampton train is departing from the highest number platform. Um, so that means that Wolverhampton has to be from platform four. Mm, perfect. Um, so what, what some people might have done here, Mohu, actually, is they would have they would have used the golden clue straight away. Mm. Now, what, what would be the disadvantage of using the golden clue straight away, which which, again, I did this purposely because we talked about the golden clue again yeah. and again. But actually here, this is the opportunity. This, this is now get, starting to um, really understand why the golden clue is useful. But would mm. it be useful straight away in this incident? in this instance yeah because if we just relied on that information we would have put c wrongly because we know that c does we know that wolverhampton doesn't leave at 11 15. 
exactly. So we would have seen Wolverhampton train departs on the highest numbered platform. We'd have looked here and we and we can see, oh, wow, Wolverhampton and platform four, we, we might have chosen that straight away. OK, that's why the, the, that's why we need to use the combination of the golden clue and also the follow through method here. So the follow through method gave us the opportunity to realize that we're going to spend some time looking at Wolverhampton and Milton Keynes in a lot more depth. So now that we know that um, now that we're reading this kind of um, second sentence here, we can see here, Mohill, that the Wolverhampton train, oh, it's just glitching a bit. Um, OK, there we go. The Wolverhampton train departs from the highest numbered platform and the Milton Keynes train is departing from an even platform. What does that mean in terms of Milton Keynes? Well, Mil Milton Keynes has to be from platform two because there's no other even number that's there. Perfect. So we know 100 percent that we can select B. Mohill, I haven't even talked about the Glasgow train. and We haven't even mentioned Glasgow once during this question. Is that important? Do you think do you think students can kind of um, get a bit overwhelmed by this because they haven't even looked at Glasgow at all and, and not even paid attention to it? I think a lot of people with the UCAT try and be perfectionists or try and grasp every detail, which in an untimed exam is absolutely fine. But with something like decision making, where you only have a minute per section, you need to be really quick and just let go of not knowing all the information. Fine, we don't know when the Glasgow train leaves. Fine, we don't know what platform. But actually, we didn't even need to bother looking at it. And instead of it being a, a four, four answer question, it becomes a B or a C, a true or a false. And that increases your chance of getting it right, you know, by 50%. Um, so it's very important that we don't try and answer every single option. Um, because if you imagine, Shim, there was an option E or F, this would take us forever if we tried to look at all the options. I think... Honestly, Moha, that's that's that is one of the big kind of points from today. I think you know we we've mentioned a few things today, haven't we? The golden yeah. clue, we mentioned the follow through. We've kind of those two encompass guesstimating as well, don't they? Those yeah. two points. Yeah. And then finally, I think that that is a really really important point. And that point that you mentioned there is even if you haven't looked at one of the kind of options here, and in this case it was Glasgow. We didn't even talk about Glasgow once in this entire question. That yeah. is fine. That's absolutely fine. Don't get worried about that. Um, so what some people might do, Mo Moho, is actually waste another 30, 40 seconds looking back at Glasgow and, and trying to work out, okay, was Glasgow actually platform one? Um, yeah. You know, well, you know, I know that Glasgow now then has to leave at 11.30. You know, is that going to be important? Is it not going to be important? Mm -hmm. um, so, Quite an important point there, Mo. Do you just want to summarise in terms of this question, in terms of follow the follow through method? Do you just want to summarise that to everyone one more time? Sure. So the golden clue, the way that golden clue is, that's about the highest, the lowest, picking one piece of data and you know just trying to eliminate information. The follow through method, that's all about picking the you know item that's mentioned the most or that we think is the most relevant. And what we do is we follow it in the question. So the same way what we did here was that we focused on the Milton Keynes train. So what we did was that we start, we knew that Milton Keynes was mentioned often. So what we did is we found Milton Keynes in the text, wherever it was mentioned, we found what time it was leaving. And when we did that, we also found where else is Milton Keynes mentioned? It's mentioned about it departing from an even platform. Um, so the follow through is all about following one item all the way through and focusing on that. Not, not trying to focus on Glasgow, on Wolverhampton, on Milton Keynes and Birmingham, but just focusing on one item and following it through the entire question. Um, that's how I would summarise the follow through method. Perfect. Um, again, Moha, uh, um, when I uh, gone through this question with some students, they have basically read through these three bullet points. And they've read this final bullet point. And the final bullet point here says the Glasgow train is leaving from a platform between Wolverhampton and Milton Keynes. Mohul, that's quite an, that's that's still quite a an important point, isn't it? Because yeah. we know that the Glasgow train, therefore, can't leave from platform one, can it? Exactly. So again, just by reading one of these um, bullet points, we can immediately remove A, and we again we're giving ourselves an answer to a, a chance to guesstimate. So um, if we if we got rid of A, and we could have what was the other one that we got rid of quite early on, um, Mohul? Uh, I think it was C. We got rid of because we. Yeah. Yeah. So we got rid of C because we knew that it, the Birmingham train leaved at 11.15. So even yeah. if, again, we're really struggling with time now, we're looking at something like 50 seconds of time that we have for this question. We could have got rid of Glasgow. We could have got rid of C. 
and, and therefore we're left with B or D. And if you were really unsure, you needed to move on to the next question. Again, now we're giving ourselves a 50-50 chance. Exactly. Brilliant. So let's move on to one final question here, Mohor. This is the last question that we're going to go through in terms of, again, we, we've kind of we've talked through all of this, haven't we? Uh, we do you know what we'll do, Moho, is we'll, we'll just go on to all the questions that we have. Um, I agree, about this, yeah. uh, because I think that we have, I don't want I don't want to overwhelm people. And, and I think yeah. that what we've covered today is actually, you know, I, I don't like covering 10, 15 things all at once. I like covering, you know, two or three points because we can generally we can only remember kind of two or three things in kind of a half an hour, one hour session. So um, hopefully Moho, I've kind of really explained that and emphasized a few points there. Um, I'll emphasize yeah. it one more time, Mohill. So we've got golden clue, we've got follow through. Those two encompass guesstimating, don't they? And the, the final point from today is don't be so hard on yourself if you have missed a, uh, if you haven't even looked at one kind of part of the answer. So for example, this bit here really emphasized this. We didn't yeah. even read Glasgow. We didn't even touch on Glasgow at all. Exactly. And I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think you know, there are lots and lots of tips that we teach on our on our own courses. Um, and what we find is that it takes time to actually understand these tips, to practice them, etc. So today, you know, we, we can only give you a snapshot of all the tips and all the techniques that we do have on our courses. Um, so do definitely check those out. <clears throat> We have lots of free videos on YouTube with lots of more tips. Um, but, you know, if you'd like to go through questions like these, learn other tips like the follow through golden clue method, you can definitely check out our website where, you know, you can book a tutor, do our online course or even practice lots. There's lots of free resources available as well. So I definitely check those out. Um, but, yeah, I think what we'll do now is because we only have about 10 minutes left. We we'll move on to the Q&A um, for decision making. Um, and, yeah, it will, we'll do future um, webinars perhaps on decision making but I say if you do want to really understand decision making get on top of it definitely check out one of the resources on our website um, so yeah perfect so if we just head over to um, the Instagram page and if anyone has any questions you can just submit them to our story and then you know we'll read them out um, so one question that we've got at the moment is um, Shivam are you, are you, do you need to head off or no no that's fine that's fine Fine. So one question we have is what knowledge of probability is required for, for decision making? Sorry, Moho, do you mind just repeating that again? <clears throat> what what sort of um, what what level of probability is required um, for decision making? Oh, OK, so what level of probability? So it's definitely not a level probability at all. It's actually very basic GCSE probability. So what I would do is actually just go back to your maths kind of probability GCSE part that, that, that you learned and, and really just recap that. That's what I would say. Um, Moho, one of the things that's really important here in decision making is that you get asked sometimes about ratios and, and fractions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, if, if something is one eighth and something is two thirds, um, you know, sometimes that can be, if you haven't done maths in a long time or mental maths, that can be a bit tricky. So that, that's what I mean by kind of that level. It, it really is GCSE probability maths. Brilliant. Um, so the next question we have is, um, let me just read that out. So do do we get pieces of paper or, or kind of anything to write on for, for these sorts of questions? Because I think people are finding it hard to just visualise all the data. Yeah, and 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 to, to really answer that, it, it's so challenging. I think anyone who even answered questions today just by not even writing anything down, you know, really fair play to you because that is incredible. Um, I would really, really struggle with these questions if I didn't have a piece of paper. And even I had a piece of paper in front of me kind of quickly jotting a few things down. Um, in the exam, Mohill, when you sit in the exam centre, you get given a whiteboard. So you get given a whiteboard and a pen and you can, uh, I, I, do, I don't actually think you can rub out the pen off the top of my head. It's normally permanent, yeah. It's normally a permanent, uh, permanent ink. So that means that you can actually have two or three whiteboards with you. Um, which is absolutely fair enough. You can use the back, the front of a whiteboard um, and in, in, they don't use pen and paper. So you, you actually use a whiteboard. So actually what I would, would say is um, if you do have a whiteboard or something around, you know, tr maybe practice with that, but it doesn't really matter. You know, if you, if you have a piece of paper, just just don't, um, just you know, that, that, that's exactly the same to be honest. So um, what about Mohill if you're sitting this at home? 
Yeah, so I think, so last year what we had was some people were able to sit the exam at home um, and what was decided is that you have this online scratch pad where you have this kind of notepad, like a Google, um, like on your laptop where you might have a notepad on there and you can write a few notes. But I think as of now, Shivam, the, up, the latest update from the UCAT consortium is that it will be in the test centres. Um, so at the moment, we don't really have facilities for um, home testing. But if that does happen, it will there will be similar facilities provided. Um, so yeah, just coming on to the next question, um, would you recommend timing yourself uh, when you first start with these questions or not timing yourself? What would you say? Really, really good question. Um, what I would say right at the beginning when you're starting decision making is absolutely don't look at the time at all. OK, the reason why I say that is um, it's like, for example, Mohu, if I gave you a um, A level chemistry question and, mm. and this was the first time that you that you're studying A level chemistry you know, you're not worried about time, you know, you're worried about getting the answer right, um, and trying to get trying to get to the answer in the first place. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize here. Don't worry about time at the beginning, try and just work out what the answer is, because oh, um, with practice, the timing will come. And, and maybe, you know, a few months later on down the line, that's where I would start just recommending, you know, having a little timer there and just assessing how long you're spending on each question. Um, and then much later on down the line, so, you know, we're talking about a month uh, before your exam, that's when you should really be getting into the groove of answering questions in that kind of minute minute or so. Definitely. Um, I, I completely agree with you there. The only thing I'd say for some sections, for example, verbal reasoning, people end up reading too slowly or getting accustomed to having lots of time. So if you are going to do untimed questions, I would say I completely agree with you, but try only do a few untimed at the very beginning. Um, and then get used to the time or have a rough time. For example, when you do the, the untimed section, if it's 31 minutes for decision making, give yourself maybe 35 minutes or 34 minutes. Don't give yourself an hour, for example, because that's where you can run into lots of um, trouble. So that's the sort of thing I would say. Um, so, yeah, uh, moving on to the next question. Um, so at the moment, so obviously it's, we're in April. So for the students in Australia, they'll be sitting in the UK in, in July. For the UK students, it will be any time between you know, July to September. What should students be doing now in April um, for their revision? Yeah. Um, so what they should be doing now, Moho, is actually going through exactly what we just did today, basically. So um, start going through questions, understanding and grasping what are the, what are the types of questions that can come up. We've gone through that very, very briefly at the beginning. We, we mentioned that in decision making, you get questions about Venn diagrams, syllogisms, these logical puzzles that we've gone through mm -hmm. today. So actually now what, what students should be doing is starting to grasp what, what, what the questions are like. You know, like you mentioned, Mohill, timing, you know, it is very, very important. But when you're if you're if you're just starting your UCAT revision, then I would say maybe don't look at the time for the first week or mm. two weeks. But then after that, start, you know, just just giving yourself maybe one or two or three minutes extra. Um, yeah. And uh, but but yeah, I think Moho, would you agree in terms of at this stage? Um, what, what about students who have actually started to grasp for questions? What should they be doing now? Yeah. So I think what people end up doing at this stage is thinking, oh, gosh, there's so many question banks, so many practice questions I have to do. Let me just start now and do, you know, hundreds and hundreds of questions. Um, and then, you know, when it gets to their exam or when it gets to two weeks before, they're not scoring great because they haven't actually, you know, learned the theory. People think the UCAT is an aptitude exam. It's not like biology or chemistry. You don't need to revise as such. But there are so many techniques. For example, today, Shivam, you've taught us two techniques out of the, you know, 200 that we teach in our courses and other courses teach. So there is actually a lot of theory and a lot of understanding that you need to do before you go and purchase a question bank, you know learn about each section of the exam, learn the techniques. When you do questions, reflect on them, what's causing you to run out of time, what's causing you to get them wrong. Um, and I'd say for now, focus on theory. So, you know, you could, for example, get a one-to-one -one tutor, you could watch videos on YouTube for free. There's so many resources out there where you can learn theory. Um, and I do that to begin with. And then when it gets to maybe a month or six weeks before, then you can really start doing questions. Uh, because what can happen is that if people start doing questions at this stage, they don't really pick up any techniques, they don't improve and they actually burn out. Whereas if at this stage you focus on theory and getting your method, you know, basically on lock and, and, and understanding it, it, it's a lot better and more efficient way of, of approaching it. 
Yeah, perfect. And just to clarify to everyone, if you just go to the Medic Mind website, you'll be able to find all this information, all the kind of resources that we have. I would highly recommend if you're struggling understanding the theory, um, if because remember, at the end of the day, theory is key. Like Mohil said, if you don't understand the theory, you can do thousands and thousands of practice questions, but just be wasting your time because actually you're making the same mistakes over and over again. You're not really understanding the technique. And, and a lot of the UCAT is about technique. Okay, it's about technique and it's about efficiency and putting them together. If you're struggling with things like that, I would highly recommend just checking out the website. And if you feel like you need a tutor just to really guide you, like I was guiding you today and what Moha was talking about today, just to actually teach you some of this theory, that is something that I would recommend if you if you feel like you are struggling and you want that extra help. And yeah. you know, you can you can have lots and lots of tutors like myself who would be able to actually go through this on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, what I would say, Moho, is thank you very much for today. I really need to shoot off now. Um, I really hope that this was useful when the students found that, you know, that those, those points that I mentioned there about, again, I'll mention it one more time, the golden clue, um, the follow through, again, they encompass guesstimating. And then finally, that point, Moho, really, really remember that if you miss a point like this question, you missed Glasgow, we didn't even talk about it. That's absolutely fine. Um, Perfect. Thank you very much, okay, everyone. So what I'll do now is I'll just put the link to our website on the on the chat. So if anyone wants to check out the resources or anything, um, you can find everything on there. We cover all parts of the application, Australia, in UK, in all parts. So yeah, definitely do check those out. Um, and yeah, thanks so much to Shivam again for today. I think you did a really good job in condens condensing so much information in the time that we have. So yeah, thanks to everyone who attended. Next week's webinar will be on quantitative reasoning at the same time, 11 a.m. UK time and 8 p.m. Australian time. And please do register for those on our website. Um, thanks again for coming. Yeah, thanks, guys. And also, I've got a lot of messages coming in um, just to say thank you. And that they really found it useful. And that's really, really useful on our behalf as well, you know, just to, just for in terms of future feedback. Um, any kind of queries or questions, you know, get in touch with us. Definitely check out the website. Um, definitely check out um, kind of if you need some tutoring or extra help with the theory just just get in touch with us and we'll be more than happy to help you um, but yeah perfect we'll have a lovely rest of the day um, lo thank you so much to everyone there's loads of fantastic comments that I'm getting over which is really really brilliant it's brilliant, really good brilliant. to see um, perfect. thank you so much have a brilliant rest of the day keep revising going through it don't be so hard on yourself um, and yeah we'll see you very very soon for sure take care guys